Hi CJ, thanks for joining us for the Iron Quest feedback for the advanced charts round. I think this is like your third time on Iron Quest. Oh, good question. What have we done? We've done We did Sports Biz Sunday. Yeah. We did the uh, revisit. The revisit, yeah, yeah, that was a good one. And yeah, yeah this one. Yeah. yeah. So third time. I think you are the only one that's done three. I think Kevin, Kevin's done two. There we um, are, and he's, uh, he's slacking, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, well, I've got Ken this time, so, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get, a, like, a twin in there somewhere. Um, but, yeah, so great to have you on. Um, I think most people know who you are already. But do you want to give a quick 20-second intro to yourself? Oh, yeah, I'm CJ Mays. I am a enablement director at JLL. In my spare time, I like to do a lot of Tableau, so I'm fortunate enough to be named a Tableau Visionary for the second year and Tableau Ambassador. Um, I do have my own website and I plug it at every opportunity, uh, cj-maze.com, where I look to do a lot of things to do with all kinds of parts of the data process, be it the processing, data visualization, and I tend to do a lot of stuff that's focused on sports data. So if you're interested in sports, please do check it out or also check out the initiative I co-lead and with three other guys in the community that supports with Sunday. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would not to plug the blog again, but um, <laughs> to be fair, you do, you are pretty active on there. And I do like how you have a variety of different, um, not just, it's not just Tableau, right? You're, you're weaving in that it's a Python and other tools as well. And then you have like maybe guest posts from other people. So it's a good mix of things, I think. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much. Nice to hear it from someone else, not just myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm not plugging the, you can go and find the URL, like it's everywhere. Yeah. I'll probably get it wrong. But anyway, okay, um, without further ado, we are gonna switch our cameras off and then I'll start sharing my screen and then we can go into the visits. So we're gonna be reviewing five visits today. These go in alphabetical order um, based on first name. Now, the um, what we're doing this time is we had a lot of entries. So we're just gonna be sharing feedback for visits for people who'd entered IronQuest for the first time. So um, if you have entered IronQuest multiple times and you've asked for feedback this round, unfortunately, we're not gonna have the opportunity to review your viz. But if you are desperate for feedback, then please reach out to us um, and we'll see what we can do. So these, everyone we're gonna review today is gonna be a first time um, entrant, which is really exciting. So CJ, hopefully you can see my screen. I can, I can. Brilliant. Okay, so this viz is by Bryson and it's looking at average life expectancy at birth by country. So in this phase, Bryson breaks down the countries by their income group. So we've got high income right through to low income. And then on the radial, you can see in that descending order, which countries have the highest through to lowest life expectancy for each country in that income group bracket. Mm. Yes, I I like I like the oh, I like them all because it's advanced chart types and I'm um, <laughs> a real stickler for, for going uh, creative in the wild. But what I like about this is that you kind of have a methodical approach to it. So it's kind of start with these filters, test them out, and then have a look at how that impacts the radio at the bottom. So it's got a quite an unusual flow to it in terms of picking the different years and the gender and then being able to highlight the country and I think having that highlight country name in there makes the chart better because obviously you want to look for a specific country you're not going to know it intuitively off the different income groups um what one thing I did like about the um coloring is a bit fairly muted colors they've gone with a sequential color palette of going from low to high um the lighter shades into the darker shades so um, that was fairly easy to understand and one other design aspect i did like was i can see that they've gone to the extent of making the background moon slash sun slash circle um for it to go around so they've obviously thought about how they wanted to lay this piece out on the page mm -hmm. yeah I do like this viz because it's, it's very clear what you should do and how you should interact immediately right it doesn't require a lot of instruction um and I like the way that the background kind of frames the viz as well like just you know it's not too overpowering or anything like that 
and the, the layout of the, the, the just the nature of this chart really helps you sh show the stark differences in life expectancy by countries by their different income groups so we can see this low income group around here the bars are obviously a lot shorter than the ones in the higher income brackets yeah for sure the the thing about this being a radial chart is a bit not the most intuitive naturally um because you would assume everyone being the same would be a perfect circle it really helps show that gap where you can see that in between those different income groups where it starts up again at the highest um where it's almost like a kind of a puncture in the circle mm -hmm. i think that actually brings its own story to start having a look at those differences i think what happens or tends to be in the community of why you see this idea that all advanced chart types are bad is the idea of are they showcasing the data in the best way possible now um, there could be a point to argue that you know if you have all these different birth years is the story that you want to actually showcase probably time series data of how life expectancy of the different countries has changed over time um, and that might end up being one of your more standardized line charts or um, potentially even a comet chart showing your maximum and uh, or your earliest and latest uh, year dates. So um, depends what you want to showcase. And, and I'm very pleased to see uh, Bryson in this case going with uh, and trying out a new chart type. Um, but it is always worth noting as we go through all these different visits, is it actually the correct and most appropriate chart type um, for this situation? Yeah. And I think, you know, probably for the most of the charts we're going to look at today, they're probably not what we would typically say is best practice, right? But that doesn't mean that they're bad and they shouldn't be used, right? Um, that's a very like, broad brush statement. Yeah. But, like, you, they're typically not going to be the type of charts that you'd see certain people recommending, right? Maybe in like data viz books for different, yeah. different types sure. of analysis. I thought for this one as well, like building on what you just said, a good alternative option would be you know keeping with the radial but having an alternative view so this particular view is broken up by income group makes it difficult to kind of imagine how like you described the countries would appear on a continuum so you could see the country of the highest life expectancy right through to the lowest so i thought a good there'll be potentially for this phase a good alternative would be to have that kind of switch so you could switch between splitting it up by income group and then just removing the income groups entirely and then just showing it as a radial that goes from highest to lowest all the way around. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's all about the, the context, about what you're, the metrics you're trying to showcase in, in the best way possible. It's also, I don't know, I did see on your notes, Sarah, um, some people will have submitted it as iQuest feedback versus others just want feedback in general. So. Yeah. It might be worth us just mentioning, um, not specifically about Bryson's Viz, but in more general terms, the idea of that those three points of analysis, design and storytelling. Do you want to put some of that into perspective? Yeah, so that's this one was Iron Viz feedback. So I would say, you know, for for an Iron Viz Viz, it, we'd need something more than just a one chart kind of bit typically right there needs to be more story there more analysis at the moment i think what we're showing is great but we would need to see more like, digging into the data you know actually analyzing data and getting a story out of it rather than just presenting the data as it is on the surface yeah yeah absolutely uh, we need context as to what why it's important what the most um interesting story within all these different countries are um, is there specific years that need calling out? Um, perhaps there was something that happened within a country that made life expectancy fall, be it war, famine, etc. Um, do we see big differentials in, in gender from, from females and, and males in specific countries? What part of the world um, do they um, come from? What, what kind of things are actually impacting life expectancy? So in the broader sense of Iron Viz, that's kind of the story and narrative that you'd you'd want to, to deeper, uh, search a bit deeper in. Yeah, we can think about the stuff that Hans Rosling did 
um, in factfulness, right? And they're lo looking at the increases in life expectancy, particularly in low income countries and maybe digging into things like that to build out that story. What I see this as is more of a exploratory analysis, whereas I guess the iron is often more explanatory. So there's no reason why you can't have both, but it's just looking for a happy medium of the two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but well done on a fantastic radio viz. And I see the twins have been credited with this one. <laughs> so um, kudos to them as well. Yeah. Yeah. Great work. All right. Moving on. The next viz we have is by Iman. And this one looks at title mania. So WW. E. I want to say F. <laughs> it's E. Right. Yeah. Um, are you, a, are you a wrestling fan, CJ? Uh, not hugely. I know it's more popular in the States than necessarily here. Um, I've yeah. probably watched it in younger years, but I, I know some of the classics. Uh, I wouldn't know everyone that's showcased in the visual. but Yeah. Well, so this, what this viz does is it looks at the, the history of um, the sport. Looking, I, I like how this is almost in enclosed in a in a ring which is really cool we have yeah. the um curved timeline which shows the champions from right when it started to the present day and if we scroll down we get a little bit more information about the top 10 longest waits between reigns for multiple winners so you can see like how long they were waiting for each um title and then some more information at the bottom about like the people that have held the belt the most times and where the um, belts are typically won as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, so it's a, it's a we'll lovely start bit. at the top. Yeah. And I feel like all the components are here. And what I wanted to do, if we could scroll to the very top, mm -hmm. I, um, I love the title. It's uh, very unique and, and fits the design of the, the WWE. I'm sure that's the, that's is or close to their their logo logo as possible um and like you mentioned i love the design of the um the ring that they're in and how it, like, the person's put that overlaid overlaid that over the top so i think it's a nice nice idea on framing in terms of layout though when i started to scroll to the bottom of the viz and i saw the bar charts showing the context of who's um held the belts, um, crowned. We've got some really nice cape guys in there in terms of titles held, um, what superstars, how many individuals, all these things. I kind of want at the top of the mm -hmm. visual because for me, that's a lot of context. There's an, a vague individual that knows the sport um, or, the, or the match per se, but doesn't really know too much about them. I, I wanted that information probably more up front. So I would have I would have started with the bar charts, then perhaps gone on to the um the square and the timeline and then end on on the radials. If we could flip back up to the start, I know it's a little bit of scrolling here. Yeah. Uh, but here's all the individuals. Now I could probably pick out a handful of individuals on here that I might know i'm not going to but what i will say i mean you can see oh god hulk hogan the rock yeah, the rock john uh, cena john cena is that right mysterio yeah there yeah. we are <laughs> but looking at this you have to really search for them and i know they're all the same but what i'd like is a little bit more conformity to it so let's put on perhaps a circular background for each individual let's mm. try and reshape those images of the different characters to be a bit more similar in style and look and then let's say what is the most important so is there a prominent character so that bar chart showed us who was the uh, who retained titles the most frequent could we oh. use color encodings to be able to put, perhaps make a circle in the background highlight what players those were just to lift certain players off the mat or the canvas and then fade the others into the background. Now you could do that by using um, either circle colors in the background, or you could uh, actually grayscale some of these players out, or, or you could use different highlight features to be able to um, highlight from the bar chart um, the characters on the page. So you can reference the timeline a bit, bit easier. Yeah, I really like that um, idea around coloring them. So maybe we color them yellow or what, whatever color that is. I'm saying yellow because 
it's the bar chart color, but maybe highlighting these players um, so they instantly stand out, which adds that additional context. Another thing I'd like to add to the, the curve timeline, which by the way, I think is great. I, I really like the amount of information we've got contained in here in a, in a relatively small space. But one way of breaking it out a bit more would be to add the decades, because mm. there's, there's a lot of, I'm surprised how many um, winners we've got here. There's, I mean, there's multiple people each year, right? It's not like they hold the award for the year and then hand it over to somebody else. So if we could break up those decades so you can quickly zoom in on particular like eras, I think that would be good as well. Yeah, that would be a lovely adjustment and also would really help tie into that uh, circular rate semicircle viz uh, the chart just underneath yeah so looking at the longest weights now this refers also to the timeline so something that can intertwine the two would have been really nice and then this kind of refers back to the color encoding so personally i would not have used the diverging color palette because i think it's a little bit confusing what i would suggest doing would be to highlight prominent characters, use a color for the individual, and then map that up and down to both the bar chart and, and the canvas um, chart. That way the, the whole um, visualization is, is integrated into one. Um, also, because Hulk Hogan is, oh no, not Hulk Hogan, um, Bob in this case is weighted the one of the largest amount of times between reigns, you see that Hulk Hogan's behind it. Now, yeah. is there a story within Hulk Hogan that you want to do? And so you need to reimagine your use of color and sorting for this chart? Or is it that you wanted to draw out the fact that it's, uh, you know, that's the maximum, but then how do I refer that to the top and bottom charts? Yeah, the problem with this color palette as well is it's highlighting the, the shortest and longest reigns, weights, sorry where really we want to really focus on the, the longest and you can see that with the annotations, right? The bigger the circle, the longer the weight. Oh, I see. So as a result, because some of them are falling in the middle, they're coming up gray. Um, where if we'd had a different color palette, like you say, I think that could have worked better. Mm. But on the whole, yeah, lovely and, and nice one for giving the, uh, the curvy timeline chart. Again, another twins one, I think, but I wonder is, yeah. I wonder how they did go about creating that second chart. I didn't download it in the end. I wonder if it's a um a circle on size and then the cut off the axis or whether they've used the identification and done an arc chart there. That'll be interesting to know. I think it's an arc chart. Okay, very yeah. nice. Well, but, very um, nice yeah, chart. just to add into your feedback, I'm glad you said about putting the bands at the top because I had that in my feedback as well. Um, just two more minor things I would change is just turning off the command buttons on the tooltips. Uh, you can see they come on when I click the bars. And then just adding a border all the way around the edge. So we can see the text is going right up to the edges. So we just add a border around the edge and just bring everything in a little bit and give it some more space to breathe. But overall, I really enjoyed looking at this. Um, and I think the, the colors work really well against the background. Everything's super clear, which is sometimes difficult with, with black backgrounds. Yeah, the white is nice and punchy off the page. I do like yeah. that. Yeah. All right, great job. Okay, so next we have a viz by Bolahan. And this one actually was Viz of the Day. So this is the Press Freedom Index. Yeah. Yeah, so I love this viz. This actually looks like it's come straight out of a newspaper or something. It's super clean. And he won the Vizzy Award, didn't he? Yeah, um, Best Newcomer, I think. And there you notable, are. Notable newbie, sorry. Notable newbie. Bit. Yeah. Um, this shows why, I think. It's yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, I mean, this, so we're looking at um, the Press Freedom Index and looking at different, uh, initially regions and the countries are in these regions and how they classify into the, the different scale of the, the Press Freedom Index. So from satisfactory through to very serious, very serious being that it's dangerous for journalists in those countries. Um, so there's a nice Sankey here. And then if we go down, what, do we call this a sort of bubble chart? It's not a bee, bee swarm. swarm. Is it a bee not swarm? A bee swarm. Okay. I, don't I, I don't know. I don't think it's a bee swarm. I don't know, but whatever. <laughs> there's another chart here, which then breaks it down by country. 
so we can see the same information at a more granular level. Um, oh, that's stuck in my head now. I'm going to say it's a bee swarm. We'll have to look on Tristan. I think that's from Tristan's uh, um, plugin, so we'll have to go look, uh, look it up and find the <laughs> name. But yeah, fantastic visual. Uh, I think you're right in saying it looks like it could be in a newspaper or a kind of a history book or science scientific kind of uh, manual printout, right? It's, it's a yeah. lot of context. And for me, that makes me worry less so about the amount of text on the page. Normally, I would say, you know, it's quite heavy in text, but I think it gives good definitions. It um, also gives good context reading through. Now, naturally, I hate reading, um, but it's needed to understand the flow of the chart, what what good means um, and how you how you go from left to right in terms of the zones to situations. Uh, one thing I did notice, and I, I could be wrong, I was a little bit confused as to not the colour encoding, because I think that's fantastic, but the order on the right hand side. And I was confused as yeah. to why you have very serious, difficult, and then your good section instead of problematic, uh, problematic then satisfactory, then good. Mm. I didn't notice that. That's interesting. Yeah. So that would be an open question. Whether that's, uh, you know, a there's a reason I haven't cottoned on to, or whether that could do with uh, reordering. Um, yeah. That was one piece of feedback. But saying that, what I did like was the call outs of the, um, you can see how design wise he's got these lines going across and then the color print of the text and, um, the different ranges so stuff like that if that wasn't there I would be none the wiser as to questioning why that was so I think that was some really nice design styles in there same on the left hand side I think these really nice design labeling um, tricks of having slightly different sizes in typography and uh, means you're naturally going to read the big numbers first and then you might see um, what continent it's from and then read the the index uh, text afterwards yeah um, one thing that I want to mention as well when they're on the text is so we have these definitions here of each of the um, different groupings, right? Mm -hmm. And then we scroll down. It's we're looking at essentially the same information, but at the country level, when we call it the bee swarm, um, and then we've got them. Funny enough, they're in a different order here, so it's in the order you'd expect, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there's. A bit of an explanation as to what these are. Personally, I'd, I'd probably take out the explanation here because we've got it up the top in a in a more detailed like fashion. So I think you could probably get away with just labeling that very serious, difficult, without the added detail. I don't know what you think, but yeah, I would I would I would agree on that. Um, but it's odd because whilst I don't necessarily need the definitions repeated. I liked having the labels there and I also like that he brought the color legend down because mm. as you scroll the page you might forget what those different colors um signal so I really like the fact that he's, he's added in the, that color legend at the bottom yeah absolutely and I'll, I'll definitely keep the labels it's just the additional text that I think might be redundant given the fact that we've got those detailed explanations at the top mm. It just gives you a summary of the number of countries, which maybe you could put into a a line of text underneath the the category. Um, another thing that confused me a little bit was in the Sankey, we've got the regions, and it looks like some of them are broken into two or three groups. Now, presumably these are countries, so the countries within those regions that are grouped into wh wherever they fall in the Press Freedom Index, but it's there's no way of knowing what those countries are just by looking at the, at the Sankey. Yeah. That's where that information comes in down here. And I did wonder if there was a way of highlighting, but it's not at the country level, so it's never going to work. But when I click on highlight country, let's say Afghanistan, this all grays out. So I think just need to make sure that those highlight actions don't apply to the Sankey and only apply down here. Yeah. Take Same what words out my mouth there that's one thing I did notice as well because the Sankey is obviously an, an aggregated level um, yeah you're right and so the highlight feature albeit it works on the bottom one it doesn't necessarily um, work on the top one unless you create a, a new mapping 
um, if you could be a bit fiddly with, with the data, it would be actually quite nice if you could create a, a highlight country on the bottom and then it either makes a mark at the top as to show what part of that index it comes into on the left hand side mm. or flows through to on the right. But that is going, you know, different levels, um, very new layers, um, very creative. I'm presuming this Sankey was built using, I'm going to say the old school methods of uh, well, using yeah using the twins templates as opposed to using the, the new beta it uh, must have done because that that beta expired at the end of june so any visits that were created using the beta have reverted back to a basic chart now and this okay. is still living and breathing so <laughs> yeah. it, can't have been, it can't have been using the beta okay but yeah overall fantastic design wise you know it's uh, it's one of my favorites in, in in terms of the style used and I think he referenced Chimdi, so if referencing him, you're not going too far from uh, incredible design anyway. Yeah, absolutely. It does, it has that kind of chim Chimdi look and feel. It, you know, it always seems to nail every time. So, mm. yeah, just can learn a lot from him. All right, next up, we have a viz by Jack. Um, and this one is using Superstore data to look at employee retention. Now, I don't know about you, but when I opened up this fizz, I was a little bit initially overwhelmed. I didn't quite understand what you'd even call this this chart. Um, it's actually called a lightning bolt chart. Um, and then the chart down here is called a mounting range. Um, but the, I don't know if you saw this when you were going through, CJ, but this fizz actually has a really, really cool how do I read and interact section with a click through tutorial. Which loads. So it gives you, you know, a breakdown of exactly how you need to read the viz. So we can see the lightning bolts show the monthly percentage of retained employees starting from one month up to a year. And then what we call the mountain range shows the rolling retention rate across all of the retention periods. So we can see how that changes over time. But I really love this kind of click through tutorial, which makes it really easy to understand. Yeah, without without the tutorial, um, it does take a lot longer to understand. I think, well, one of the misconceptions in the community is that data visualize your chart type of the data viz is bad if you don't understand it straight away. Now, that's I don't think necessarily the case. So, for example, this did take me a good few minutes to understand. And yes. I needed that um, help me guide um, to start to understand that, okay, this is the, the rolling amount of retention. And then at the bottom, you have that, um, the joined up of where they, where they land. Um, and it's, yeah, a lightning bolt and mountain range. Now I hadn't seen this before and I thought, wow, it's incredible. And once I had started to play around with the, how do I interact with it and, and, and explain it to me. So, um, Kudos to that, because again, this could be showcased in many different ways, but I thought, wow, that's amazing. Now, one other thing that stood out to me, I was like, oh, okay, let's um, try and figure out how they created this visual, because I was like, there's a few elements in here that stood out straight away, because I knew it couldn't just be a line chart, because how, how can you enter an advanced charts uh, Ironcrest with just, <laughs> just the line chart, but you have the line chart, then you have these uh, the circles and the dashed lines. So I was thinking that that's got to be at least three layers. And then I saw the timeline at the top. I thought that looks um, uh, manually um, added in, but as a as a layer um, yeah. because of the different shapes and and the text. Now I was like, okay, this is this is really racking up the the different layers here. So I downloaded it. There's about thirty layers to this visual. Wow. Now this is all one sheet even the bottom bit. So, because when we click on these, it swaps out the, um, well, it filters down to particular, um, uh, the different them? segments, segments. yeah. Right. yeah. And they're all on the same sheet as the chart above. Wow. It really, it really is crazy. So you'll have, as you click onto the different segments, you'll see that the color changes from the gray to the white, that will all be on the same sheet. Um, they've got all the different, uh, bands and the sub bands both at the bottom 
um, and that top right indicator when it, the one that's kind of the zoomed in image. Um, so there's yeah, there's so many different layers to this and the different positioning of all the different logos and that axes will have all been plotted in as well. So um, truly Amazing. magnificent from a technical perspective. And I really am going to go away and try and reverse engineer some of it because to actually have rolling values in your layer map layer as well is very difficult to do calculation wise so uh, i was yeah. particularly intrigued by this piece and did you look at the explain me by any chance yes yes yeah. did you? so this I'll just click through this quickly this actually it tells the story of the biz almost for anyone that hasn't got the time to find their own insights it tells people exactly what's going on you can click through almost almost like story points but much much better um to actually see that story in full which i thought was really cool so yeah i was really really impressed by this viz um just something different you know the one thing i would change is actually just bringing these buttons up to the top so i'd actually put them above the chart because i did initially miss them so if we could have them up the top somewhere so that you see them first before you see the chart um i think that would be good but Personally, I wouldn't change anything else. Mm, yeah, it's a tough one because um, Jack's obviously using some of the white space in that um, open area where the um, okay. lightning bolt yeah. or the mountain range hasn't quite reached the bottom. But yeah, you're right, intuitively, do we need that context up front of how to understand this visual? Probably. And, and that goes also for... Um, those that want to take part in the um, iron vis feeders for things that need to be explained you've got to get those sorts of things up front before people read the chart so you've got to think about are you reading left to right top to bottom z formation all these things play a part in in wider visits and and more scrolly telling visits for sure too yeah absolutely but overall i think this is amazing yeah, yeah, honestly. It's, it's um, rare that I get so excited about Superstore visits. <laughs> um, <laughs> this one, like, it's really different and, and really well executed, so well done. All right, so we have one final this look at, and this one's by Kalon. And this is super simple, but super cool. So it's uh, what I'd call a 3D tree map. Is that yeah, fair to say? That. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, it really does what it says on the tin. It's uh, literally just a tree map, but in 3D form. Um, but I thought the way that it was, you know, executed was really cool. It looks really cool on the page. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this isn't by any means what you'd normally expect of a Tableau visualization. This is something that you probably be scrolling past on Behance or, or Pinterest and, you know, or you see it in a, kind of a magazine print or something. Yeah. Um, but I love the simplicity behind it. You know, we're looking at one thing and, and one metric only. Um, I think, albeit normally people might complain about uh, how you have different uh, areas. Trying to compare areas can be difficult. But I think the um, having the quintiles where you have one that's so big at the top and one that's uh, you know much smaller than the the middle three I think that's a story within itself right yeah um, I think so you're still get you're still getting that takeaway even in this form right um but you can quickly see at a glance which is the biggest we've got the tooltips there if there's any doubt as well yeah absolutely um, yeah yeah so yeah it's one of these cases where you know you don't even have to put the story in front of me it kind of shows itself and you use the cool chart to, to showcase it and i would love to know how this is created i mean i understandably it's polygons and, and lines but i'd like to understand how this was you know shifted um on its axis how you brought in the um different shapes to be able to align it to be cuboids um i haven't seen how that is done so i wonder if that's like mental arithmetic or or there's some sort of software uh, um mm. to be able to create this chart because very cool it's very, very cool. cool yeah great job 
Okay, that's, that's it. That's, the, that's our five visits for today. Um, so thank you, CJ, for coming on. Really appreciate you sharing your feedback. Um, and I'd like to invite you back again soon, hopefully. Yeah, we'll do a, we'll do a fourth one. And yeah. Be, uh, have to think of a new topic. <laughs> reigning co-star of Iron Quest. That'd be nice. Yeah. All right. Well, thank cool. you. Uh, take care. We'll see you soon. Thanks for having me. All right, so my next reviewer for this um, episode is Tristan. Uh, welcome, Tristan. It's great to have Hello. you. Great welcome. to have you on Iron Quest. It's been a long time. I think I've been running this since 2019, and this is my first time having you. Yes, that's true. That's true. I'm really happy to be to be here, especially with that subject of making uh, more like advanced type of chart or like doing something that is a bit out of the box. I'm really happy to to discuss with you and review some of the video that the people sent. Yeah, I mean, and since I launched this, you've just taken it to town with your with your chart tools and everything on your website. So I think when I think of advanced charts and uh, mm -hmm. I just think of you now, <laughs> and I, when, when I set up this project, I thought who's building out templates and things. So I was like CJ, Ken, me, Kevin, yourself. Um, but now you have all these um, almost like accelerators that just make it much easier um, than the old yeah. templates we used to use. So, so exactly is the. Um, I think it was a, a good moment to to start this um, this Iron Quest. Um, for me, it's like I always I always saw all the kind of templates and tutorial that you needed to follow and create uh, data. Um, how is how is it called? Um, like to to mix the data to duplicate the number of points. Yeah, like data identification. identification sorry. Yeah, exactly. To to then be able to create curves and those kind of things. And for me, it's like that it will work, but the tutorial really takes some time and is is a long process, and I don't really want to go through it. So I was like, I never used any of those kind of tutorial and templates, and I was like, well, I know how to make things in D3 on the web, and maybe there is a way to convert that into Tableau. So I really try to simplify that process and and yeah, help people make some key or core diagram in a in a friendlier way without having to go through creating calculation and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah. Now, if people want to check out what we're talking about, where can they find your work? Uh, they can go on my website, is La Dataviz, um, and there, you will find some some tools uh, in the in the nav bar. There is like a few trick, trick tools currently, and one is called Adviz, and it's specialized in creating advanced visualization. Yeah, and I've, I would say I've tried out some of them myself. They're super easy to use. I've Thank you. tried and failed many times in the past to do like Sanky diagrams and network charts. <laughs> and then just with a couple of clicks, you have, you know, you can produce these charts in your tools. Which, I mean, yeah. it's, it's even someone that has no idea what they're doing uh, could figure exactly. it out. So that, that, that was the main idea is yeah. to simplify the process. But also, I want to say that I'm really happy about the selection of the views we are going to review today because I think none used my tools. They no. were all advanced visualizations that were done manually, and they are also really interesting. And I learned even myself a few things by by watching at them. So really cool. Yeah, hmm. and that's pure coincidence, by the way. I I didn't yeah, okay. I didn't yeah. assign them to, because of that reason, but we just went down in alphabetical order. So yes. um, anyone watching this will have seen my interview with or review of CJ. Um, so we started off at the beginning of the alphabet. We're going by first name. Um, so we're just continuing the, that review um, with the next. The batch of participants in this round. And as I mentioned at the beginning, um, we're only going to be reviewing visits by first time participants this time because we did have around 25 entries and it's just too many for us all to review. If you do need feedback and we're not reviewing your viz, um, please let me know and we'll try and figure something out. Um, but I think we can get into it. So yeah, okay. Um, if you want to share your screen, I'm going to switch my camera off and um, we're going to start off this uh, review by reviewing a viz by Kate Miller. Uh, and this viz is the adventure of the unearthed family trees. So this is looking at um, family trees in the Sherlock Holmes book series. Um, and it, it, what's quite cool about it is it's it almost um, reveals spoilers. Like so, you might think the family tree was one way when um, you started off, and then you can reveal how it actually was as the you know as the book went on. Yeah, exactly. So. Um... Well, first I have to say that I was not familiar with the the books themselves. So it, for me, it was like um, I took me a bit of time to figure out what was the context of what I was looking at. 
And I think that is part of the, um, maybe my first feedback is when you arrive in a kind of visualization like that, it's always good to have some text, always some text that explain, uh, I would say, what is the, um, how to use the viz and what is the topic, right? Because yeah, there is a title and stuff like that. And for the person who make the viz, it's your subject, right? So for you, it's like kind of, and I've been, um, I, I've I've done that wrong myself in the past. It's like you you work on a subject so much that eventually you're like, yeah, people are going to understand what what this is. But for someone new that arrives to the visa, it's always good to really assume they don't know anything about the subject and to yeah. to talk about it and ex make some explanation how to use. Yes. Yeah, I'm in exactly the same boat as you. I don't know much about this subject. I obviously know who Sherlock Holmes is, but I'm not super familiar with these books. Um, so I, I was a little bit confused when I first came into this, not because of the design, just because of the subject matter. Yep. Um, I, I think some additional context would be good. Maybe, you know, especially where we have some unexpected like changes in the family tree, like it would be good to add some context in as to what happened in the story and wh why that changed. Yes, so I, I would I would say the the same. I I be because of the style of the viz, it was kind of clear that it was a family tree, and also is, is in the title. So that that made a lot of sense. It was more like understand that you can click on those things, and is by doing that you understand what is going on. But if there was some explanation of like, hey. Uh, this is the state of the family tree as you expect it at the beginning. And when you click on this, it will show the kind of the reveal of, and just having that bit of explanation in, in that part or something would be, I think, really, really valuable. So that, that would be my, my biggest um, things. And actually I made um, a video a long time ago for a Tableau event about RNV. So about participating in, in RNVs and a bit the, the key success of uh, RNVs um, visualization, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, I really summed it into three parts is like context, analysis, and personalization. And it makes like every viz needs that cap. That's kind of the thing that I say. So CAP, context, analysis, personalization. And for me, this one had analysis perfectly. You could learn some things, you, 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 learn about those books and the family tree personalization too because i can click on different elements i can select the book that i want to see but i'm really missing the context and if without context in the first place you lose um you lo you can lose people so yeah context yeah. analysis personalization that's really the for me the trio the the three things that are the most important when you make a Wonderful. I love that. I think that that's really powerful and it can be implied in all contexts, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, great job, Kate. Thank you for entering. Um, yes. The next quiz we're going to be looking at is by Mahia. Ma sorry, uh, Madhiha. Uh, and this one is the uh, You Are Loved billboard location. So this quiz was for um, a Back to Biz Basics round, I think, in collaboration with some other projects that were for Pride Month last month. Um, so I think the You Are Loved is a series of billboards um, that were located around the US and the data set looks at where they were, and how many there were, that kind of thing. Um, what I really love about this viz is it provides that context, right? So in contrast yep. to what we just said, there's a lot of context here at the beginning to talk about the You Are Loved billboards, what they are. Um, you can click through and find out more information about the, the uh, artist. And I think that's super, super helpful because if we just went in with this information, it wouldn't be super clear what we were talking about. Yeah, I agree. Um, I didn't know about this either. Um, and I, I discovered what it was. It was really interesting to read. And I was really a bit of that that kind of scrolling a bit uh, that you, you have a first eye catcher. Um, image some explanation and then you go into some some um, analysis so I really like that approach i think i also like overall the kind of uh, style design of like th this this uh, first part and some some aspect i would say that um i i actually see this one about the flower the the flowers and i think that is really the kind of advanced chart that was used in that visualization mm -hmm. And for we've me, got, I thought we've got yeah. some burst charts as well. So I'd cla I'll classify that as advanced. Yeah. They're, they're more subtle. They're all almost become part that of the design. True. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, that is true. Uh, but but what like <laughs> for me is like this 
this uh, type of visualization, you don't see them often at all. No. And for me, it's like, well, that could even be kind of your eye-catching thing in, uh, on the top, right? So instead of having that that image, you can keep the image, but also have those kind of flower visualization that that is like data art to some point is like using data to create some kind of artistic things. And instead of having it really at the bottom of your visualization, really make it, it uh, shine. So I just made a small changes and I wow. did it like really quickly just to showcase what it could do. And I really kept the same visualization, but is but by just um, reducing a bit the size of the image and putting the, the flowers on top, you can really have just like a first introduction with this visualization. And it kind of grab your attention. You kind of even want to understand a bit more what is this about, right? Yeah. So that would be my first um, first advice or context is if you have something that is out of the ordinary, something that that is really worse, don't hide it. Really make it shine. Make it really the the first thing that people people see, right? Yeah, that looks amazing. I love the way on the black background they those colors really pop. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The, the, I think the pink the pink works for the topic, but um, at the same time, it, it's, there's very low contrast on those charts at the bottom. So as you say, you have these beautiful flowers that are kind of hidden because they're fading into the background, whereas on that black background, they're really, it's almost like they're glowing, right? They're, they're exactly, really yeah. popping. It looks great. Um, my other second um, kind of feedback was also regarding colors, and that's, I know colors are hard, they are hard for, for everyone. And I was looking at that map, and for me, I understand the um, the the idea. I understand why you wanted to to the, uh, wanted to use those colors uh, because they were like the, the same colors as as in the flag. So it was creating some kind of coherence in the visualization. But for me, because there is no sequence, no hierarchy in those colors, it was really difficult to for me uh, to understand that well, 51 and more, which is the highest number of billboards was that um, that purple and the 3140 was that pink, um, that bright green. So it was really difficult to just look at the map and kind of figure out which state had the most. Like it was really going to the legend and then back to the map, to the legend, to the map. And and I think in those sense, and I'm, I'm all about breaking sometimes the rule, but in that sense, I would have preferred something that were a bit more sequential, right? Yeah. And it doesn't maybe look as cool as you would like it, but it's in terms of readability, in terms of seeing that, okay, uh, California, Arizona, and Alabama are the three states that have the biggest amount of billboards. I think you can see that more clearly. Yeah, I had exactly yeah. the same thing in my feedback, and I, I love how you've actually brought that to life in the in the biz. I also... Um, struggled with this viz with the selected states. So we're here, we, it's defaulted to Maryland. Um, my geography of the US is pretty good, but as soon as we put it in hex max, like form, I, I struggled to find certain states because they kind of move around. So I, I struggled to find Maryland and because it's not in the color, it's not in a, mm -hmm. in a special highlight color, right? it's just the color yeah. based upon the number of billboards. So if, if we could, if you're using that approach, I would suggest um, highlighting the selected state in a different color, a completely different color, right? So it stands out. Um, and I, but I, I do like that interaction though, so that you could select a state and you get that additional information for that state. Yes, no, I agree. I agree with you. And um, other um, kind of uh, feedback, but that's really how do you say um, personal is in those kind of um, in that donor chart, like kind of pie chart, right? Mm -hmm. You could rank because currently for each um, region, the the state. Uh, sorted alphabetically mm -hmm. um, and they could have been sorted by number of billboards even though like in that case because it's not necessarily a visualization that you will really look to analyze the data is more there to give a, a over perspective of each region I think it's not that important like yeah. it could be just there for the visual fun of it um, even though I would maybe just because I'm more analytical on that side, prefer them to to be ranked. So if I go to Southeast, the first that I see is the, the region with the highest number of people. But yeah. maybe visually it will not be as as fun. So that's that's more like um, up to interpretation. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I do appreciate the, the additional context um, and commentary that you see throughout this biz, though. So we have everything's explained, right? That you exactly. have, yeah. Which is really good and really adds yeah, that additional context. And I do kind of like how not only have we got the flower charts, which I'll, I'll just call them flower charts for now, um, mm -hmm. but we have the bar charts as well. So you've got that that additional summary, which I think is useful. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there was a good mix of um, context um but the the mix of the things i said before right the the yeah. context explaining what you see the analysis showing you interesting and easy to read data and personalization because you you had this possibility of clicking in some area to look at your own state and stuff like that so yeah, yeah. overall really really good job i would just be like just those kind of few design that are not necessarily mistake but having that sequential color having the 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 flowers on top um and yeah, overall, really, really good, good visualization. Yeah, great job. All right, so next up, we have a viz by Megan Hollis. So this one is comparing world socio-political metrics. Um, so this viz allows you to pick the metrics that you want to compare, and then you can see a breakdown by country. And then if you select a country, um, it will show a radar chart as well. Yes. Um, yeah, so for this one, they are like really, th those two charts are really simple and they help you understand kind of the the complexity of the data. And then you have that radar chart that allow you to um, see kind of all the variable for one for the selected country. So I have a, I had to, to actually also download this visualization and, and play a bit in Tableau to understand a bit better. Um, and let me show you here. So, and I will just show you kind of the few things that I will do to um, kind of make it really quickly. That is any, not, nothing about the design, just to um, make it a bit more easy to understand and to read, right? So, and a few, few tips and, and advice. So the first is like here you have all single country, right? So you can really see, and that visa I really like it a lot because you, you, as you say, you can select your your variable and really plot them, and then you can see the which country have the highest rule of law and press freedom and the lowest, and you can really compare the different countries. So this visualization I really like it. I would even make it bigger for for people to really see it, right? So yeah. kind of nothing to say about this. Really good. Now this one has a few, for me, important issue. Um, I don't think you can sum those indicators, right? Mm -hmm. um, the press freedom index, and because in 2017, we only have one country, so you have this big drop, and it's not like a drop, it's just like you are summing a lot of country to one. So for yeah. me, first, like those two things needs to be kind of median or average, right? Mm -hmm. um, and also, I would, I would, in that case, remove, um, let me put it to discrete, um, remove, yep. It's, the, it's probably an incomplete year with just some countries reporting. Exactly, data. there is only right. one country in that year, so I will do something like, well, it, um, it's not statistically comparable with the other one, right? Yeah. Um, so now you have this, and for me, I was still puzzled because um, the... Um, the rule of law is something that goes between minus 2.5 and 2.5, right? Yeah. But if you look at here, it goes to minus 50 to 50, yeah. which if you look at actually the, the value for like a country, for example, let's take, let's take Singapore, the rule of law is 1.7 and the press freedom is 56. But if you look at the line chart, it will be kind of the opposite. The rule of law will be uh, 47 and the press freedom index 1.8. So the issue is that the, um, the axis have the wrong title. So I just wanted to point this out because it's actually really, really cool because it's a really new feature that Tableau put that before you couldn't have a um, dynamic axis title. So now with the, the newer version of Tableau, you can say my axis is based on a parameter. The only mistake that the person did is the axis is actually this one is the the y axis and this one is the the x axis. Yeah, and easily done. Like, was not necessarily the the easiest thing to not make a mistake. And the same as in the tooltip, 
uh, you need to to reverse and be like um, um, this one is actually oops this one is actually x and the other one is actually y and now things will make more sense and I have a small tip for you if you want to well, now you can see rule of law 1.7 press freedom 56 now we are kind of correct and the small tip if you want to make sure that you are not making these kind of mistakes especially when you have like a dual axis in a visualization which it's considered not necessarily good practice but we can um, always do something nice is change the format and be like if my blue line is my rule of law, then I will use the same blue in my axis. And the press freedom index is my yellow orange line, so I will change that to orange. And now it's a bit easier to read and you, you can more easily make the association and verify that you are not doing a mistake. Yeah, that's a great idea. That is my, my main uh, comment. And as an overall thing, once you select a country, um, it's really good to have a radar chart and also the evolution. But what you will always kind of want to do to bring a, uh, an extra layer of, um, of, I don't know, analysis is to compare the country that you have selected with the overall median or average, mm -hmm. right? So if I add, this is like currently the median rule of law and median press freedom index. If I click on Singapore, I would like to keep the median in maybe a different like in a, in a color in like in black just for me to have them as a reference so when i select singapore i can compare singapore with the average or the median of the world right because as it as a as a value itself i'm not sure if it's good or bad it's really difficult to compare so i would do that um, and the same for the for the the radar chart i would maybe put it with a bit of opacity and a border and have another one another radar chart yeah. in gray that represents the median of the different countries yeah so you're almost plotting them on top of each other so you can see the world exactly. and then so the you can, your selected country is much higher in one aspect compared to to um, the average of the, the country so yeah. always having that kind of comparison is like I'm, I'm always saying when I talk to 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 people about this kind of KPI or, or thing is like is one million big? Yeah. Well, I say that a lot no in my in, in my in my training. I say, I'll have these bands that be like you made one million dollars profit, right? You know yeah, exactly. but that doesn't but mean anything. <laughs> if you are McDonald's, that's really low. If you are myself yeah. as a freelance, that's really high, right? So exactly. one million is really really it doesn't mean anything. So you need to exactly. always compare with maybe a previous year or another reference point. And in that case, yeah. it would be comparing one country with the median of all the countries, right? Yeah, agreed. So. For the radar plot, um, when I do these, I like to have um, some kind of, again, a frame of reference. So sometimes you'll see people using different rings, so like there'll be circular rings. Yep. So you can see the maximum for, for any one of the points, which I think adds mm -hmm. that additional context. For me, I, I would personally like to see labels on each of the points. Yes. And you could add that to that, to that almost like that reference that you'd put in the background. Um, and then I love the idea of, of have it plotting like the overall kind of world rankings somewhere like in a, in a gray uh, shade as well for context. Yes, but the what I must say of the good thing is like there is that there was that um, button that you can also click and have some explanation about the different uh, metric that you are going to see. So that is uh, in terms of context and understanding what what you are looking at, really good. But really needs to be uh, extra focused on making sure that what you are showing in your axis is actually the correct information because that is um especially in our world of data visualization we need to be extra uh, um certain that what we are showing is 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 correct right yeah absolutely and well done for supporting that yes. all right so um the final biz we're going to be looking at today is by nicole mark and this is stats and stories which is a podcast um so it's looking at an analysis of the different episodes that they've published um, kind of what categories they fall into, how popular they've been, how long they are, um, and who the special guests were in each one. Yeah, so do you have any comment for this one? Yeah, so I really like this. I, yeah. I was really impressed. I think it's it's Thanks. easy to understand. Um, I like how Nicole's not only got the the radial chart here, but she's also got the bar chart for additional context. Yeah. So that I, I love to see those summaries whenever, whenever we're doing charts like this. Um, 
the uh, it also has some cool features so you can actually switch the view to a table yeah. um which i thought was, was nice um so if you're not comfortable looking at that chart you can get some more information here um and she has these um kind of like filled like circles to show the length of the episode so that's mm -hmm. visually showing that data in the table which i thought was quite nice as well yes i like that too I like that too. And for me, is what you said, like the radial jump by itself, that can have a bit of complexity, but uh, combined with the bar chart next to it, that also allow you to click to highlight the different educational podcasts, environmental. I think that really work really well to to kind of figure out what you are going to to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. I would probably add a, a title to the business tool tip. So just the title of the category. So you, so it's mm -hmm. just, you, you know, which one you clicked because uh, then everything grays out when you click it. So just adding that title of the, the Vizin tool tip chart, I think would be useful. Um, but yeah, I, I really think this is really nice. I like the color palette. I know the, the colors are in some way similar, but I think it's, it's fine because they're all labeled. Um, it's, you know, it's not spoiling the design in any way. And because you can highlight them, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you can highlight them, then then I don't mind that. Yeah. Um, and there's some other cool features. So you, you've got the information icon, which shows you how to read the biz, uh, which yes. is, I found that super helpful. Um, and then there's a button at the top with the people that talks about like, a little bit about the podcast and who mm -hmm. the hosts are, I think. Um, but I think that the other button seems to be broken. I imagine that would take you to the podcast or, um, yes. yeah, maybe give you a website or something. It doesn't seem to be working. But I think what's missing for me is that call to action. So, okay, I found out about the podcast, which I've, you know, I've never heard of this podcast before. And I thought if I wanted to go and listen to it, how could I get listen to it? So it, having a button to click through um, to actually go and listen to the podcast would be great. Yes, I agree. Um, I agree. For me, Again, as in the very first one, I'm missing maybe a bit of text. Like, uh, and I can really see that Nicole put like a, a lot of thought and energy and and time into this visualization. And it's about a subject that probably she knows and she knows about the stats plus stories podcast. I don't. So, a first two sentence intro of like this podcast is about this. I find it cool because of that, and I wanted to represent this would have helped me to want to enter into the, the visualization. Yeah. Um, also, it took me a bit of time and a, there is like the how to read. So you can find out that each ring represents one year. So the the more inner ring is the is 2013. And the more you go out, you can you will go to 2023, right? But at the at first glance, you don't see that, you don't understand that. And for me, that was really easy to solve, and I just wanted to show you um, how. So if you go on Figma, you can, for example, uh, add a, um, a picture of your visualization and then create those kind of circle that are really uh, low opacity with the, the years. And once you are ready with the design, you can simply hide your, um, your dashboard, export that frame as a picture, and then you can put it on on top or below your existing visualization. So I think nice. with just, I don't know how it looks on the screen because for me it's like really low opacity. So it's almost not uh, visible, but now you have those kind of rings and you, you when you arrive on the Vs, it's much clearer that those are years. Um, and you can, yeah, I, I just think it's like a really small tweak, really small changes that allow you to better understand and be like, okay, there is a, there is some order in that chaos, right? Because when yeah. you just see the point, I think it was a bit difficult to know what what was there, right? So yeah. having the kind of ring helps a bit to understand the the the, the process. So yeah. I just want to say that is the small change that I would have done. I love this. So that, that it's super subtle, but it, it works really well in, in describing that. Sometimes with these types of charts, people might do a mock-up um, where they'll mm -hmm. show an example where, where typically they'd show what you've shown here in maybe an information icon or something. But here, I think Nicole's just kind of verbally written the instruction exactly. to read rather than showing something visual. But I think you know, people understand in different ways better. So I think sometimes people need the picture, some people need words. And I think this, you know, this satisfies everyone. And um, one other thing I would love to see in this biz, and you touched upon it, is um, I'm assuming that Nicole is a fan of the podcast. So I'd love to have some kind of personal annotations in this mm -hmm. biz, maybe pointing out her favorite episodes, 
maybe um, explaining why some episodes are more popular than others, if there's any controversy or anything in there, maybe some popular guests they've had on. Just weaving in that personal information, I think, is always good and helps really bring that, that story to life. So a few annotations here and there, I think, would be beneficial. Yeah, that is, that is a re really good point, like adding a bit of your own uh, as an author, as, as someone who, who's creating something, add a bit of your own thoughts. I'd be like, hey, like a, just a small arrow. Hey, check this one. It, it was really interesting. Just making it a bit more engaging. That's, that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. no, great job. I think it's a really nice looking effective biz. Yes, really nice looking. Good yeah. job, everyone. <laughs> yeah, well done, everyone. Yeah. All right, so uh, that's it. That's the, the four visits we were looking at today. Tristan, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to download the visits and, and get stuck into them and, and look to make some improvements. I think everyone will find that super valuable. Um, yes. It'd be interested to see if anyone takes your ideas and actually republishes their visits with the with the updates. Um, yeah, I, I, like um, I think it's it's an it's a really nice exercise, and also Tableau Public is great for that. That you yeah. can really download a viz and it's not to steal it or anything it's maybe just to give feedback to see how it has done uh, how it was um, made yeah. and in that sense the very first so i i kind of made a proposal for every of the visual visualization but the first because the first one was actually not downloadable um uh, okay. the could not get the adventure of the um, unearthed family trees to kind of show the small changes that we've done because it's not downloadable so yeah um I'll, all my bees are downloadable because people I want people to be able to to open them, tweak them, and kind of figure out how it was done. So I would I would always advise people to make them um, open um, for, yeah. for people to to learn. Yes. Same here. Like all of mine are downloadable. Um, and yes, definitely something I advocate for because it is a great way to learn just doing that reverse engineering. And if you see yes. something you like, you can download that biz and figure out how they made it and make mm -hmm. your own version. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate your time, Tristan. And uh, I'll speak to you soon. Yes, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you. Great day. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye. All right, so we're back for our final review. This time I'm meeting with Ken Flerledge. Hey, Ken. Hi. It's great to have you on. It's really hard for me not to say Kevin. I'm like defaulting to Kevin. So this is <laughs> actually your first time on um, on Iron Quest. So I've had Kevin, I think, like three times, like as an old timer. But um, I finally got Ken. So uh, yeah, really happy to have you here. Um, for those that don't know you, do you want to give a quick um, intro to yourself? Yeah, uh, Ken Flerledge. I've uh, been using Tableau for seven years now. I'm a, I was just... Uh, put in the Tableau Visionary Hall of Fame. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And uh, my Kevin and I are consultants at uh, Moxie Analytics. Great, yeah, I mean, I doubt there's very many people that don't know who you are, um, <laughs> but if, if you've been hiding under a rock maybe, um, I will share links out to your blog um, and all the great stuff that you do at the bottom of this video. Um, so thank you for joining me today. As you know, we're gonna be reviewing advanced charts. We've got four visits to go through. And, and as I've said on the other recordings, we're going to go through these in alphabetical order. So um, this we're towards the beginning of the alphabet, sorry, towards the end of the alphabet now. Um, so let's get into it. So I'm going to share my screen um, and then we'll get started. All right. So the first biz we have here is by Rebecca. I'm actually going to switch my camera off because I'm looking at a different screen. Feel free. To do the same. Hopefully, you can see my screen though. Yep, you can. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so this biz is by Rebecca and it's looking at the rising stars in the AI revolution. So it's almost um, categorizing different countries by different indicators where, as it comes to AI and looking at where they are on the scale. Um, it took me a while, to be honest, to get my head around like the data for this one. Um, I think. You know, it's, it's quite a complex kind of rating system that, that, that's being used here or visualized here. So it, it took me a minute to kind of read through the viz and actually understand what we were looking at. Um, but, you know, overall, I thought it was a great application of different charts and analysis of the data. What did you think, Ken? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I had the same problem, right? I read that first paragraph um, uh, a couple of times and, you know, I, I think 
you know, to, to start off with, you know, just a suggestion, I think it would have, you know, would have been good to start off with a little bit more explanation of, you know, what are the different categories and, you know, how are the things measured and that kind of stuff. Um, that said, you know, I thought this first chart, you know, it, it, this is all about advanced charts. I think that that chart um, was pretty effective, right? I mean, you know, it really shows the United States way out of the head and uh, China, you know, somewhere in the middle and then everyone else uh, off on the left. So I thought it was a pretty good use of that, um, of that particular chart to, to show this information um, in general. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I did laugh at the data because like USA has scored the absolute maximum of 100, which I thought, you know, was, I don't know, a little bit idealistic, but hey, yeah. I'm not, that's the data set and not the viz. Um, but yeah, I noticed here you could change the category shown on the bar charts okay um, I missed that. so I, I when i'm looking at this i see you know the data's there so i thought maybe it'll be good if that filter could also be applied to the b swarm uh, which i don't think it is it's not yeah oh no i think the colors are changing but the placement of the dots isn't changing yeah it would have been great to, to be able to yeah to change the category and see you know, see that same chart because I thought again, I thought that was a really effective chart. It would be interesting to see, you know, as you change the categories, are there other countries that are stronger in certain areas than than maybe than maybe others? Um, and and that, you know, I think in general, I I thought um, you know that would have been good to just be able to see a little bit more of you know those those this categorical information and, and break that up. Um, but I, and I totally missed the filter when I first looked at it myself. But <laughs> yeah, and I I did notice that the instructions for um, the B swarm are actually down here, so I I'd probably put them at the above above. So I try and yeah. put instructions above the chart that you're introducing so they don't get yeah. lost. Um, that's I mean there's a description here of what the colors mean. So yeah, if you, that at the top I think would work better. Um, and then as we scroll down, we have this other chart here which is looking at um, kind of like all the countries. Um, and both there, I think that the circles are sized by the overall score. But then if you hover over the tooltip, you can see a breakdown of those individual scores as well. Yeah, um, you know, if we and if, as data viz people uh, don't always love bubble ch bubble charts. I, you know, I actually think this isn't um, this this kind of works here, right? You know, because you're not all, yeah. you're not really looking for exact precision, right? You're you know, the size of these bubbles and the color um, kind of helps you to pull them out. I think the biggest issue with the bubble chart here is just you have to hover to see the the uh, the name of the countries. You know, some of the some of the bigger ones there, you you don't actually see the label right there. Um, you know, so another chart might be able to do that. Bar chart or something like that might be able to do that a little bit better. Um, I. I also wonder about the color a little bit as well. You know, this continuous color palette. Um, I mean, I don't know that it's necessary, right? Because the, we've got the size there as well. But, um, you know, it's a little bit hard to distinguish one of those colors from another. So maybe, you know, if we use the continuous palette that had, you know, two different hues for the start and end or something like that to just create a little bit more contrast between each of those uh, different items might be make make it a little bit easier to sort of pick out each of those uh, colors. Yeah, I agree. I thought that maybe adding like a highlight um, filter would be good because I, I was looking for particular countries and it took me a while because, you know, they're not all labeled. So I was like, hovering around mm. like, where, like, where's Saudi Arabia? Like, because right, yeah. it, it's mentioned above. Um, that, so something like that might be helpful for the audience. Yeah, um, but I did appreciate the narrative. So you know, it does the narrative does tell a story throughout, um, and then it ends with a, a conclusion as well. Yeah. I thought it might be nice just to add a call to action at the end. Um, so if you want to read this report, if you want to go learn more about it, more about AI, maybe just including a button to link out to some more information would be good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, the one, one, one other, you know, suggestion I would make is, you know, it, it, use a little bit more white space on this. You know, most of these yeah. charts are going right up to the edge, to the left and the right of the, the viz. And then, you know, they're sort of packed together within as well. So, you know, white space is your friend. And, and we're, a couple of the, the vizs we'll look at here later use, employ that really well. So just create, just add a little bit of white space, cr create some separation. 
and then it'll just give it a little bit cleaner uh, design for sure. Agreed. This fizz looks quite small as well, so I think you could definitely add yeah. quite a bit around the edge um, and that inside as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Great job. Okay. The next fizz we're looking at is by Tanya, and this one is looking at the global art trade paths. So, I mean, instantly when you open this fizz up, it's like very like visually stunning. Um, you know, I I just love the look and feel of these. I don't even know what you call them, radial network charts. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'd call that a network chart, yeah. Yeah. Um, so here we're looking at trade paths. So basically looking at each country and how they, whether they're a art exporter or art importer. Um, and then we can actually change the category. So if I, we've currently got sculptures um, selected. If I click engravings, the chart will update for engraved art, antiques, um, you get the gist. Um, and if we hover over the countries, we get a sense of who they're supplying or who they're importing from as well. Now, are you able to do everything all at once? I, that, that wasn't clear to me. I mean, if you just deselect, uh, I don't uh, think yeah. so. Okay. No. Yeah, all right. Yeah, this one just won uh, Visit the Day, I think, a few days ago, if I remember correctly. I think I saw it. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I think it did. Yeah. I mean, you can usually tell by looking at the number of favorites, right? This has got 82. Oh, so, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it must have done. Yeah. Um, for this one, you know, I love the interactivity. Mm -hmm. I love the highlights. So, it's, this has got the kind of highlight that we meant on the, the previous spheres where you can actually yeah. go and select a country yeah. um, or you can actually narrow it down by region. Or continent. Um, the one thing again that I would like with this one is maybe a little bit more context. Um, yep. So you, you know, I, I'm not an expert in the art trade. Um, so you know, just some more context to the topic, and then maybe just a little bit more of a summary view, like um, just some high level, maybe some bands or something in there to give a high level view of um, I don't know the overall value of art traded or the the top countries. Because while this is this is great it's hard to kind of contextualize you know where countries sit in the mix who's who are the top exporters importers by type that kind of thing right yeah i do think the chart is you know it's it's certainly well designed i love this sort of uh, glowy look to it i think that looks yeah. really really nice um it you know it does take a little bit of time to you know look at the key and and just really understand what each of these things mean what the colors mean and what the you know sort of the, the flow direction but i think it's a about i think it's a pretty good uh chart type for this type of information because it really does show the sort of the interconnectedness and how this information all sort of flows and relates to each other um it does take a little bit of like really kind of like any advanced chart there right it takes a little bit of time you're not instantly it doesn't instantly sort of give you all the insights that you're looking for you're going to take a little bit more time to sort of look at it and read it and but, but once you do that i think it becomes uh pretty clear what's going on and it's really interesting to click around the different types of the different categories and see you know how things change quite a bit you know like antiques here uh, the U.S. is an importer, whereas in, I think in a lot of the other categories, they were heavily an exporter. So I, I think it's a pretty effective chart. I love the buttons there for because you could could have just used a drop down category, right? You know, mm -hmm. a, a drop down and and, you know, I, I just love this taking this extra step to create a, a you know, an, a nice user experience. It's just these clickable buttons. It looks great. It it feels very sort of natural, and I just love that just taking that extra step to do that. Although I would like to have an all option to see all the different categories. Yeah, um, absolutely. I, I, What's that? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I agree with you on the buttons. I think um, Christian Felix did a viz recently like this um, with some buttons at the side. Um, mm -hmm. It's reminded me of that, but I really love that kind of modern UI kind of design rather than just from the yes. drop downs. It just looks so much nicer. I think it's more intuitive. Um, and all the instructions here are super clear on what on how you should interact. And and we talked about uh, white space before. I mean, this mm -hmm. this does a really good job. I think it's got nice spacing around the edges, nice spaces in between all the different elements. 
um, just really uh, nice and clean. Uh, I, one thing I wonder about are, are the fonts there on the labels that I, I get the impression that that's using a different font and that uh, and that Tableau has replaced it with times or something like that. So something yeah. just be careful with is using non web safe or non sort of it really honestly using anything except the Tableau font is 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 a little bit uh, dangerous, but you know, try to stick to those web safe fonts because you know you might end up with it being converted to something that you don't want it to be. Agreed. Yeah, I think probably this section is all done in Figma or another tool like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I totally agree with you on the fonts. It's yeah. So I just track. pulled it up on my end, and I'm seeing a different font than you. So I suspect that I've got the font on my computer, and and uh, you don't, and and that's causing it to uh, switch it out. Yeah. And you know. One of the problems with that is you get the alignment issues that we have here. You see, United States is not centered in that, and that's because of these these you know font issues and how the fonts are rendered. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great job and congratulations on the visit of the day. So next up, we have this biz by uh, um, Baron, which is looking at his. It's a quantified self biz looking at his journey um back into reading so he tracked all the books that he read um from since two years ago um and you know i spent a long time looking at this biz there's just so much good stuff here um so i mean we've got the the chord diagram looking at the breakdown of when he read the books and when they were published um i'm just going to run through the biz really quickly and we can just talk about it um, he's looking here at the rate, how he rated the books versus how Goodreads rated them. So you can see how his ratings differ. In most cases, they're very different, which is interesting. <laughs> um, then you've got a breakdown here by genre. So he's break, putting the books into the, the different genres that they belong to. And then down the right hand side, we've got a timeline um, to show the number of pages he read and which book he was reading at the time. Um, and there's I'll click into it in a second, but there's um, some some navigation and additional context that comes up when you click on these arrows here, which adds that kind of personal like annotation kind of layer, which talks through what he was how, what he was going through, why he, what happened along the way, and that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, can we just talk about his design skills? Yeah. I mean, I, you, if you look, and I've seen you know his work here recently. I mean, he, he is just top notch from a design standpoint. And you see that all through this. I mean, it is just beautiful. I love the little, the way he does the sort of like the little headers of the section with these um, background, uh, I don't know how you describe that, but like the little paint paintbrush thing. Um, it's just, I mean, it just calls your eyes to it immediately. Least, yeah. yeah. Um, and just this this whole thing is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah. I mean, I suspect, you know, like the last one, that's, you know, probably some of this was done in Figma or, you know, and then, you know, brought it, I'm guessing all this text is images because it's using a sort of a non-standard font. The one thing, you know, yeah. I, and I'm, you know, same with the last one, um, you know, it, we need to be thinking about accessibility when we do that, right? So, you know, if I had a screen reader or something trying to read this, then, you um, that's not going to work because these are images, right? So it's something to be considered, you know, make sure if you're using images to, to bring in, to use the alt text at least, right? Because those can be read by the screen readers and that will just, you know, make a little bit of extra context when you're, when you're building these things. Yeah, absolutely. This reminds me of CJ's, um, Simon, Simon, sorry, Stephen Bartlett podcast biz, Diary of CEO, the one, the entry he did into, I am Viz in 2022. Yeah. Um, it's just, I think that's the, the fonts um, and just the overall style reminds me of that Viz. Um, but yeah, it's, it, that, as you said before, around the white space, this, this Viz has got tons yes. of white space and it just really helps let it breathe and just makes it more, for me, like a more enjoyable experience, like walking through it. It's not overwhelming in any way. Each each piece is like split into its own unique section. Um, there's not yeah. too much text. Like sometimes in some business you get this wall of text, which is like really overpowering, but here right, the text yeah. is quite minimal. There's just enough, everything's explained. Um, yes. 
and as you say, the attention to detail um, is is noted, right? <laughs> Everything is it's just like I'm finding it hard to pick out anything to suggest any <laughs> changes because it's so like pretty perfect. Like yeah. this this could be an iron viz entry, and I think if this was an iron viz entry, it would do very well. Uh, right? I completely agree. I mean, um, I look at you know, I look at visits like these and get jealous, right? Because I'm like, man, I wish I could do, do I mean, I think I'm a pretty decent designer, but when I look at something like this, I'm like, wow, uh, you know, this is just really, really well done. And I think the, uh, you know, to, to get to the advanced charts, I mean, can you scroll up to the top to that, that first one? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, again, you know, every sort of advanced chart takes a little bit of time to to sort of get your head around. But I think once you understand how this chart works, it's really effective, right? I mean, yeah. you know, you can really see, you know, if we look at the sort of top, you know, north, northwestern sort of part of that chart, you know, you can really sort of see this timeline of when these books were written and then when he was reading those. And it's, you know, we very clearly see that, you know, he's sticking to the last last hundred years mostly particularly the last you know 20 or so years um but yeah. there are these sort of outliers of older books um part of me did did kind of want to know like I, like i wanted to know that one that was this one uh yeah i want to know yeah. what that was right i i, um, I was intrigued there's... instantly i'm like wow that book's old like what what book was that and then yeah. i don't think you can really see it until you get down well it will be in classics i think um right but right. i don't think you can ever, oh okay you know i guess you can see is you haven't got the year though if you put the year in yet. yeah i think it might be the stranger i don't know pride and prejudice would have been probably later than 1813 or in a current might have been i don't know yeah it would have been interesting to to be able to see to sort of connect these charts a little bit and be able or to be able to just sort of hover over and see you know which books were these even if it's just something like in a tooltip that just had you know a list of them or something like that just to give yeah. you a little bit it's a list up here would be good i think i was, yeah. I was thinking you know because i know some yeah. of them are going to have multiple um and then if we go if i click on to the um the like the kind of the the narrative let's bring that up um so here we have, uh, which I thought was a really nice touch. He's adding in some, just some personal information around mm -hmm. the books, um, his like journey along the way, and then you can click through this. Yeah. So, oh yeah, so 1813 was Pride and Prejudice. Oh, okay, okay, yep. Yeah. I thought it had it to be, is. like Jane Austen actually lived near where I live. Um, oh, really? Yeah, so you can go and visit her house and stuff. You should have known that was the 1813 book then, Sarah. <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> I've not read it, so yeah, me maybe I sh maybe I should. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really just love this kind of walkthrough, um, which kind of really helps bring it to life, you know, like talking about he was on vacation, so he couldn't read. Mm -hmm. and, yep. um, just that personal touch, which is so often missing. Now, this, we've looked at some visits uh, with, within this round, and there's you know it's someone's obviously passionate about certain topics but i really love to understand a little bit more about you know what's your favorite like you know why mm -hmm. why are you visualizing this topic why what's it mean to you it just adds that additional touch i think it's really nice right yeah totally agree yeah sometimes you know topics are are dull because they're missing you know the sort of that sort of so what or whatever it's and this sort of brings it to life a little bit there was a iron viz competition that's not probably been a, been a while at this point but i think it was like uh, like meta or something it was all about you know your data collecting your data and and sharing that and i think yeah quantified this, self yeah quantified like, self right? this was, yeah. a, was a great one for uh for a topic like that yeah we did one for iron quest in 2020 like right in lockdown and that's okay. been that was the most popular iron quest i've ever done i think we had like 60 entries okay. because everyone was so bored at home and they were track. They were doing things they don't usually do. So people were taking up reading. People were started like taking up a new like fitness thing. Um, so people were tracking all this data, and it was really fascinating to see. You know. Um, but yeah. No, and how? Yeah. Uh, the uh, the vertical 
uh, area chart here. I mean, I don't know that I've ever seen. This one, you mean? Yeah, I don't yeah, know that I've yeah. ever seen anyone do a vertical and yet it works pretty, it works really well here. And it's it quite cool. I love the, the little, um, uh, the lines on the side that tell you that sort of tie back to the categories as well. Like, I just think that is really, really well done. Um, yeah. And, yeah. It's almost like a Gantt chart, right? But a vertical yeah, one yeah. on the right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's really well done. Yeah, not giving him enough credit, I don't think. All right, uh, excellent job. Um, so we have one more to look at, and this one is by Victor. And this is, is looking at the mapping of interrelationship of security controls. So um, in particular, security and privacy controls and looking at how those different controls are kind of related to each other in a, uh, a core diagram. Okay. You, yeah, this is a core diagram. I'll make sure I've got the right uh, radial uh, Sankey. Something along those lines, yeah. Um. <laughs> So it's inspired by the um, related dog breeds viz by Brian Moore, um, which I think he used something similar, right? When he was looking yeah. at the different dog breeds. Um, again, I think, you know, this is a very, uh, what I'd call a like heavy topic. Um, yeah. It's not something I know a ton about. Um, so I, I appreciate the context is there. I just think maybe some additional context would have been good um, to under, because I, what I, when I was looking at this viz, I think the, the chart works well. Um, you know, it does what it's designed to do, but I was struggling to understand how some of these things were related. Like what what was, how are we judging the relationship um, over on that chart? Right, yeah, yeah. And and the colors weren't weren't immediately clear to me how, what those meant either. Um, no. I think- in there somewhere, but it wasn't. Yeah, I was going to say, I think, I think orange is security and oh, actually that doesn't work. I was going to say and blues like privacy, but I don't think that's the case. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think a little bit like, you know, how are we defining that these are related? Like, what is the methodology that says you know these one is connected to another um and I, I you know you're clicking on those buttons i i it took me a while to figure out oh i need to click on each individual little dot there to sort of create those relationships i was clicking on the text and i was clicking on the the little panel on the left and i just wasn't it took me you know it took me a while before i thought oh okay, i got to click on a dot in a section to see those relationships so yeah. I mean, one interesting, like, I don't know that I've ever seen like a, this is a hexagon, right? It's a <laughs> I was going to say that. It's not a circle. I don't know. I don't, yeah. I mean, I, I was really intrigued by that. Um, and I, and I like it. Um, and, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, is that, is there a specific reason for that? Right. Is, you know, a hexagon, yeah. is, is that meaningful in some way? Or is, is it just a design choice? I, I think it's kind of cool. And I think it's a, uh, you know, just an interesting and a little bit different way of, of looking at it. But um, um, yeah, so no, not a criticism of it, but I'm just curious, you know, why choose that versus, you know, the more standard sort of circular mm -hmm. view of it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. Um, another thing I noted down was just, again, mm -hmm. around like the call to action. So, okay, we've got this biz. What, what would you want people to do with it? Do you want them to use it and to go and find out more information? And if, if that's the, the case, then I think just a link out to, um, I guess it would be the, the publication that we're referencing here. So you can find out more information, I think would be beneficial. Right, yeah, agreed. Um, you know, I think it, we mentioned before white space, I think, I think there's an opportunity for a little bit more white space on here as well. Um, uh, and we also mentioned accessibility and I, you know, I, I look at the, the colors of the text and I think those probably are failing, uh, you know, those contrast, you know, contrast, yeah. the contrast tests. So, cause the, you know, that, that, that orange on the black is, is a little hard for me to see. Um, and the blue is a little bit easier, but I think, you know, creating a little bit more contrast between that text and the, the background color, um, 
would make it a little bit easier to, to read the chart, I think. Maybe even choosing those sort of brighter versions of those colors on the, the panel on the left, you know, choosing those brighter versions or something like that might be might be useful. Yeah, or maybe I mean, maybe just making the text white and then, you know, I think the white would be fine. It's There's mm -hmm. different contrast um, regulations for text right. than, than there are for like, data viz element so essentially right. text is smaller and typically if you're doing a, I don't know, a bar chart the bars will be bigger so you can get away with less contrast but I think just checking it um, on a tool like coolers.co which I like to use you can just check if those colors are accessible against the color background that you're using and right. if not they will suggest another color that you can pick but yeah I did like I did like this box here I thought that was like well designed um, and yeah, I like how fine. that's populated like each time you make a selection yeah i think the the biggest thing for me is just you know maybe some instructions on again it, you know it took me a while to figure out that i needed to click on this so i think having just sort of a visual indicator even if it's a little you know finger icon or something that shows hey click on click on these to um you know to to, to highlight that closer i also you know i don't I think it would be nice if there was uh, some other sort of mechanism for doing that as well. If it, it maybe it's like a little arrow key on the little pan, uh, the panel that sort of steps through them or something that's more, you know, more sort of um, sequential way of viewing this or something like that. Um, even if it's just like a drop down list or something like that that highlights it. I think some other way to sort of step through it um, would be useful. Yeah, it's a good idea. And again, I think I've said this a couple of times, but if someone comes in here and they're looking for a specific control, um, they're probably going to struggle to find it because there's a lot. So having the ability to highlight um, specific ones would be good as well as uh, that kind of interactivity and instruction. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah no, well done, um, Victor. I know Victor's, I think, pretty new to Tableau. Um, so oh, is he? Great, great to follow his journey. Yeah, he's been doing some great work. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well done. All right. Um, that was all the visits that we had to review today. So uh, let me just um, stop sharing for a second. Um, there we go. Yeah. So um, Ken, thank you so much for for joining me. It's been a pleasure to have you as part of this round. I was saying to Tristan on the last call, like you know, I had to try and pick people that were doing a lot of work in advanced charts, um, whether that be templates or anything. But <laughs> since I published this round, we've had Tristan has just kind of knocked it out of the park with all of his, <laughs> his new tools. Yeah. So um, it's I think it's got people excited again about trying out these types of charts. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then Tableau Public, you know, testing things like Sankey's and radial charts on, on uh, uh, you know, and making those available to people and, and hopefully available more broadly to to everyone at some point in the future. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, it's been an exciting time for sure. But thank you so much. Um, always I'll a pleasure chatting to you. And I will speak to you soon. All right. See you, Sarah. Bye. Bye.